In the cold, pristine waters of Alaska, a spectacular natural phenomenon occurs every year as millions of salmon make the annual journey upstream, traveling hundreds of miles to return to the streams where they were born, completing their life cycle by spawning and ending their journey. Among salmon species, Alaska salmon stand out not only for their ecological importance but also for being the center of one of the world's most productive fisheries. American fishermen, especially Alaskan fishing communities, have refined fishing techniques over generations, with drift nets emerging as the primary means of harvesting this iconic fish. This technique, which involves deploying giant nets that drift with the ocean currents, allows for industrial-scale salmon fishing, contributing significantly to local economies and global seafood markets. But the story of Alaska salmon and the fisheries that depend on them is a complex one. Balancing tradition and innovation, exploitation and conservation, human livelihoods and environmental protection. To understand the full picture, it is necessary to explore salmon biology, the history of fisheries, how gill nets work, and the multifaceted efforts to maintain the sustainability of this precious resource. Alaska salmon come in many different species, including the brilliant red sockeye, the largest king, chinook, silver coho, pink and chum. Each species has its own unique biology and migration route. For example, the sockeye salmon, famous for its bright red color when mature, spends most of its time in the cold waters of the Bering Sea and the Alaska Sea before heading upstream to freshwater lakes such as Lake Iliamna or Lake Clark to spawn. Their life cycle begins with eggs laid in gravel on the river bottom, hatching into elevens that feed on their yolk sacs, then developing into fry that migrate to the ocean. After one to four years of feeding in the ocean, they mature and begin their journey back to their birthplace, using their keen sense of smell to navigate. This makes them ideal targets for gill nets which are set across migration routes near river mouths or along the coast. The history of salmon fishing in Alaska is closely linked to the culture of indigenous communities such as the Yupik, Tlingit, and Haida, who have used traps, spears, and nets for thousands of years. Salmon are not only a staple food but also a cultural symbol, appearing in ceremonies, art, and legends. By the 19th century, the arrival of Europeans and industrial fishing technology had completely transformed the fishery. Canneries sprang up along the coast, taking advantage of the abundant fish for export around the world. However, overfishing and lack of planning led to a serious decline in some salmon populations in the early 20th century, forcing the Alaskan government to adopt strict management measures. In 1959, when Alaska became the 49th state. The state constitution made fisheries sustainability a priority, paving the way for modern science-based management. A gill net is a method of fishing for salmon that is widely used by American fishermen, especially in coastal waters and estuaries where salmon migrate. A gill net is a simple but effective structure, consisting of a long net suspended along the water column, anchored in place or drifting with the current. The net is designed with a suitable mesh size so that salmon can get stuck when trying to swim through. Holding on to the gills or body, fishermen often deploy gill nets at certain times of the day to take advantage of the current and migratory habits of salmon. Correct placement of the net plays an important role in the efficiency of the catch. They often carefully observe the movement of the fish. Using practical experience and modern technology such as sonar to identify areas with high fish density. When fish are caught in the net, fishermen will collect the net by hand or use a mechanical winch to pull the net onto the boat. Salmon caught in nets are often processed on board to ensure quality. Immediately after harvest, fishermen may clean, store in ice or flash freeze to maintain freshness. Some boats have seawater refrigeration systems to keep the fish in the best condition before landing. Qualified fish are graded and transported to processing plants or wholesale markets. Salmon trawling is subject to strict regulations to protect fish stocks. The US government requires boats to use nets with appropriate mesh sizes to avoid catching juvenile fish. In addition, there are closed areas and times to protect salmon during the spawning season. 
fishermen must adhere to catch quotas and report their catches regularly to the fisheries management agency. Some fishermen use fixed trawling, which means they spread the net along a river or estuary and secure it with anchors or stakes. This method is often used in areas with strong currents, where salmon are forced to swim through the net as they migrate upstream. Drift nets, on the other hand, are released from slow-moving vessels, allowing the net to drift freely with the current, increasing the chance of contact with the fish. Drift net fishing for salmon is a traditional profession but requires high skills and strict compliance with regulations. American fishermen not only rely on experience but also use modern technology to improve fishing efficiency, reduce negative impacts on the environment and maintain sustainable salmon resources. American fishermen when catching salmon with a drift net must consider many factors such as time, location and weather conditions to achieve the highest efficiency. They often go out to sea early in the morning or late in the afternoon. When salmon are active and easily caught in the net, the time to release and retrieve the net is also carefully calculated to avoid damaging the fish and ensure quality after harvest. If the net is left in the water for too long, the fish can be damaged or attract predators such as sea lions and sharks, causing losses to the fishermen. When collecting the net, fishermen must work quickly and carefully to avoid scratching or breaking the fish. Affecting the commercial value, fish caught in the net are removed manually or with specialized tools to minimize damage. After removing the fish from the net, fishermen will quickly clean and preserve them on the boat. The most common method is to cool them with seawater or put them in ice boxes to keep them fresh. On large boats, the fish can be processed and quickly frozen on the boat, allowing them to be preserved for a long time before being transferred to shore. One of the biggest challenges of catching salmon with a gill net is controlling the catch and avoiding overfishing. The US Marine Fisheries Service sets strict limits on the number and size of fish allowed to be caught and the time fishermen can work. Each fishing vessel must have a valid license comply with regulations on the type of net used, and report catches regularly. Areas with low fish stocks may be closed temporarily to protect fish stocks. In addition to regulations to protect salmon, fishermen also face environmental issues such as climate change and declining fish populations due to overfishing. Changing ocean temperatures can affect salmon migration behavior, making it more difficult to determine where to fish. Some Fishermen have adopted sustainable practices such as using larger mesh nets to avoid catching small fish or implementing juvenile fish release programs. Despite the challenges, salmon trawling remains an important part of the U.S. seafood industry. By combining long-standing experience with modern technology, fishermen not only improve their fishing efficiency but also contribute to long-term salmon resource protection. The use of electronic monitoring systems GPS and sonar has helped to optimize the identification of fish schools, reduce search time and increase production. Together with strict management policies, this method is moving towards a sustainable fishing industry, ensuring income for fishermen while protecting marine ecosystem. The Alaska salmon fishing season typically runs from May to September, with peak migrations that vary by species. For example, sockeye salmon flock to Bristol Bay in June to July, creating one of the world's largest fisheries, with an annual catch of 40-60 million fish. To optimize their performance, fishermen rely on forecasts from the Alaska Department of Fish and Wildlife ADF &G, which use sonar counters aerial photography, and water sampling to determine when and where fish are moving. Strict regulations apply. Each fishing district has a specific window of time, usually just a few hours to a few days, to ensure that enough fish escape to spawn. Fishermen must purchase special permits, and the number of vessels licensed in each district is limited to avoid excessive competition. A key element in the success of Alaska's fisheries is a sustainable yield-based management model. 
scientists calculate the maximum allowable yield, MSY, each year based on the number of adult fish returning, ensuring that at least 50 to 70 percent of fish escape to sustain the population. This system is reinforced by state law, requiring conservation to be prioritized before catch quotas are granted. In addition, Marine Stewardship Council MSC, certification has helped make Alaska salmon a global symbol of sustainable seafood, expanding markets to Europe and Asia. However, the trawl fishery is not without controversy. Environmental groups point out that trawls have a certain rate of bycatch, especially of whales, seals, or seabirds. Although ADF&G requires the installation of acoustic devices, pingers, to scare away mammals. Furthermore, free drifting sometimes leads to ghost fishing when lost nets continue to trap fish. But regulations on biodegradable net materials are gradually being implemented. Eco Economically, the Alaska salmon industry generates billions of dollars each year providing jobs for more than 30.00 fishermen, processing workers, and support workers. Towns like Dutch Harbor or Kodiak are bustling fishing hubs, where fish processing plants operate 24-7 during the season. The caught salmon is frozen, canned, or flown in fresh to major cities. For many coastal communities, salmon fishing is not just a job but a way of life. Passed down from father to son, bringing communities together through festivals like Salmon Days. But the fishery also faces challenges from climate change, rising sea temperatures alter migration routes, ocean acidification affects food sources, and heat waves reduce oxygen levels in the water. In addition, competition from farm salmon in places like Norway and Chile has depressed prices for wild salmon, forcing fishermen to innovate to maintain their market advantage. Looking ahead, technology is reshaping Alaska's fisheries. Drones and satellites help track fish more accurately, while smart nets incorporate sensors to reduce bycatch. Fishermen's cooperatives are investing in organic certification and local branding to enhance value. And Youth participation in fisheries is being encouraged through training programs and funding. Yet balancing economic and ecological needs remains a difficult task, requiring collaboration between scientists, regulators, fishermen, and consumers. The story of Alaska salmon and gill nets is not just about the journey of a fish, but also about humanity's efforts to harvest resources responsibly, so that Alaska's mighty salmon will forever return to our rivers. Some U.S. fishermen have used sensor technology and artificial intelligence to optimize their salmon trawling. Sensors attached to the nets can track fish movements, measure water temperature, and record environmental data in real time. This information is transmitted back to the boat so the captain can adjust the net position for maximum efficiency. Some advanced systems also use underwater cameras to accurately identify the type of fish in the net helping to limit the capture of juveniles or unwanted species. In addition, some large fishing vessels have also applied automatic net pulling and fish sorting systems. This system reduces labor pressure for fishermen, while speeding up the harvesting and preservation of fish as soon as they are brought on board. Qualified fish are put into freezers or cooled with cold seawater, while small or unsuitable fish are quickly returned to the sea to increase their chances of survival. This help helps maintain long-term salmon stocks and complies with strict conservation regulations. To avoid negative impacts on the ecosystem, many U.S. fishermen are switching to environmentally friendly gill nets. These nets are specially designed to reduce the possibility of entanglement of unwanted marine animals such as whales, sea turtles and seabirds. Some nets are also equipped with smart escape systems allowing juvenile fish and non-target species to escape the net during fishing. Economically, gillnet fishing for salmon provides a stable source of income for many coastal communities in the U.S., especially in Alaska, Washington and Oregon. These are areas with large salmon stocks and thriving fisheries. 
However, salmon prices also fluctuate depending on seasonality, market demand and environmental factors. When supply is abundant, prices can fall, while in years of low production due to unfavorable natural conditions, prices can rise. To cope with price fluctuations, many fishermen have expanded their consumption markets and invested in modern preservation methods. Some small businesses have even built their own brands, providing high-quality salmon directly to consumers through online sales channels. This helps increase the value of the product and reduce dependence on middlemen. Some fishermen's cooperatives have also been established to help crews share costs, optimize profits and ensure stable supply to the market. Although the salmon trawl fishery is developing towards a more sustainable direction, there are still many challenges ahead. Competition from farm salmon and other seafood products is affecting the market share of wild-caught salmon. Consumers are increasingly concerned about environmental factors, requiring seafood products to have sustainability certification such as MSC, Marine Stewardship Council. Therefore, fishing vessels must strictly adhere to responsible fishing standards to maintain their reputation and access a wider market. Overall, the U.S. salmon trawl fishery is undergoing many important changes. From the application of modern technology, improved fishing methods to new business strategies. With these improvements, fishermen not only maximize profits but also contribute to the protection of aquatic resources. Towards a more sustainable and efficient salmon fishing industry in the future,